Okay, uh, getting close to the kickoff. Uh, this always signifies the, uh, you know, the for me anyway, the, the, the football is here. It's time to get going. So uh, we're excited about this year's uh, team we got coming back. Uh, obviously, we were, uh, you know, did very well in the in the polls, and and I think that works both ways. You know, it's a positive in the respect that that uh, we've got guys that acknowledge that we've got some good players coming back uh, on our team, and it's really a, an accolade for our players and, and the level of uh, ability that they have. It uh, can be a negative if you read too much into it. We know it's not going to do anything for us during the season as far as helping us win a game. All it can do is, is uh, get us sidetracked if we let it uh, during our preparation. So if we handle it the right way, then, then it's, uh, it can become a positive. Uh, got two players with us uh, to the uh, media days. Uh, first of all, Zach Moss, our running back. Uh, if Zach has the type of year that we hope he has, he'll leave as the leading re uh, rusher in Utah football history, which is a, a pretty uh, great accomplishment when you consider all the, you know, the, the talent level of the backs that we've had come through there. And then Bradley and I, a defensive end, who if he has a big year, could conceivably be the all-time sack leader in Utah football history. So so have got uh, two great representatives. They'll both have their degrees in December. And uh, that's really, you know, the, the main reason why they've come to the University of Utah. So we're proud of the fact that they're going to be graduating uh, this December. So questions? Good. I don't need these anymore, right? Still need those. Okay. Keep these right in my grill. Well, uh, first of all, we never fret too much about the schedule because we have no control over it uh, in a lot of respects. Uh, we just play them as they unfold. I think the positive is all our non-conference games are up front, which uh, is how we like it, uh, getting those three games uh, out of the way and then playing Pac-12 the rest of the way. Uh, playing the rivalry game, uh, the out-of-conference rivalry game uh, as the opener, that's something that we've never done before, so I'm not sure I can't give you a, a good answer on uh, my feelings about that. But uh, I know last year it was very odd to play that game at the end of the season after you've played the Pac-12 schedule, then play that game, then go to play a championship game. So, so that seemed a little bit uh, out of place. But, but uh, you know, the, the rivalry game being the opener certainly has the attention of our players. But uh, we go about our business the same way as we always do throughout the course of fall camp and, and getting ready for the season. Well, we think that uh, we're going to ho hopefully take a step forward this year offensively. Uh, getting Andy Ludwig back as our coordinator uh, is a big plus. Uh, he's a proven commodity, did a great job for us when he was here the last time around. Players really embraced during spring football what Andy was bringing to the table uh, schematically and, and how, uh, how he operates. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is the buy-in factor for your, from your players. And, and right now we've got great buy-in and, and they believe in what he's doing. Obviously, being a projected favorite in the South, but how do you not allow that to be a distraction for your team and stay focused on your job at hand? Yeah, that's uh, you know we started these discussions with our players uh, two or three months ago that you know because we felt that we were gonna you know have some preseason hype and, and that type of thing, and so we wanted to make sure that we got in the, got out ahead of it and and talked to our players about uh, you know just ignoring the noise and just staying focused. We all know that the Pac-12 championships our goal, as I'm sure is every team in the Pac-12. And so, uh, you know, the focus is not on the goal, it's how we're going to achieve that goal. And that's, that's the key is to take the process day, to, day by day and just worry about what you got to do that day to take a step in the right direction to achieve what you want to achieve. Well, I, you know, I, 
the old adage, one at a time, I haven't even really thought about that much right now, and we'll, we'll address that when we come to it. But, but uh, you know, the, the schedule, we think the schedule is, is fairly favorable. We have seven, you know, home games, five away, and we have the five home games in conference as opposed to four away. So, so really, I don't think there's anything in the schedule that we have, you know, any complaints about. Mm. Would love it. Earlier the better. The only thing better than 10 a.m. is 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. So the sooner we can get the ball in the air and get playing, that's that's great. No, well, we'd adjust. You know, we've we've played those games before. It hasn't been, you know, it's been uh, you know few and far between. But we've we've had those 10 a.m. kickoffs in the past. Absolutely, jump at the chance for that. Not to my knowledge, but I, you know, I'm just focused on getting the team ready. I'm, there may very well have been discussions, but uh, not that I'm aware of. Coach, you brought back offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig, who's been with you before. What did you? What are some of the things that you liked that he was able to accomplish at Vanderbilt? Well, I think Andy's had success everywhere he's been. I know he has. And, and uh, last time around, you know, the 08 season, we were 13 and 0. You know, last time he coordinated our offense, and so I've got a great deal of respect for Andy. We're we're very similar in the way we approach the game. Uh, there's a lot of uh, compatibility there. And, uh, you know, he's a, a meticulous, detail-oriented guy, which uh, fits right in line with, with the way I operate. And you lost two linebackers from your defense. Can you speak on some of the transfers, like Manny Bowen from Penn State and some of the other guys expected to fill into those roles? Yeah, we had a ton of production that we lost with Chase Hansen and Cody Barton uh, departing. Uh, great players for us, great leaders for us. Uh, but we feel like we got a chance to be pretty good there again this year with Manny Bowen and, and Francis Bernard, both of them transfers into the program. Manny uh, has not played for us yet. You saw what Francis could do last year. He got extensive playing time. And so we think between those two guys and Devin Lloyd, who's been in the program, this will be his third year now, we've got a good nucleus to start with at that linebacker spot. It'll be critical to develop two or three more guys, young guys, as we go through fall camp to give us some depth there. Could be. You know, with this defensive line we got coming in with those three seniors that headline it, uh, Bradley and I, Lecky Fotu, and John Penasini, tremendous players. And we're surrounding those guys with six or seven other underclassmen that we feel are very talented. So uh, on paper, could very well be as good a defensive line, if not the best, that we've ever had. But you got to go out and prove it every week. Yeah, Zach Moss in high school, I thought was a terrific player, under-recruited, very under-recruited. I couldn't figure out why the SEC wasn't all over him, because uh, we sure liked him. Uh, you know, the, the, we call him the Hollandale Trio, Zach Moss and, and Tyler Huntley, our quarterback, and Damari Simpkins, our wide receiver, all the same graduating class from the same high school. Uh, Coach Dennis Erickson was the one who went down there and found those guys and, and uh, got them to Utah. Of course, Dennis has tremendous network and connections down in down in Florida, and so uh, give him all the credit for, for getting those guys to campus. And ever since those guys got on campus, they've been they've been great. I mean, they're they're all three graduating. Uh, they've stayed out of trouble. They've done everything the right way, and can't say enough good things about all three of them. So was he? I mean, what was he like physically? There? Uh, Zach was very similar to who he is now. He, he wasn't 220 pounds. He's about 205, 200, 205, um, to my, the best of my recollection. Uh, you know, great balance, great vision. Could run inside, can run outside. I mean, just all the things you see him doing now, we saw him do in high school. And so, like I said, it was a mystery to me why he wasn't more heavily recruited. Who did it come, who did it come down to? I believe it was us in Louisville, if I remember correctly, at the end. Yeah. Um, you guys have gradually you know, gotten to this point where you know, the program has been very successful, made the transition to the Pac-12 very well. I mean, how many years in advance of that did you say, okay, we're going to have to do things differently? Well, right, right when we got in the league, we knew the bar had been raised in every area, from facilities to recruiting to everything. I mean, there was the, you know, the personnel that we had. When we first got in the league, we felt we matched up really well at the line of scrimmage, but not so well in the perimeters. And so it took us uh, a lot of years to continue to recruit and develop and, and uh, get the roster 
uh, where we you know needed to get it to be competitive. We're still not a finished product. I don't know anybody that is, but but uh, we feel like we're certainly better equipped right now than at any time that we've been in the league to be competitive. Uh, well, we just hope they saw the trajectory we were on, and just getting, you know, taking steps forward every year, and uh, ultimately uh, to the point where we win the Pac-12 championship. Now we won the South last year. We fell short in the championship game, so obviously the next step for our program is to try to win it all. I mean, that's, you know, that's I'm sure every team in the whole conference is is thinking the same thing, but but that's the next logical step in the uh, evolution of what we're doing here at Utah. Uh, you know, not surprised, and uh, you know, we're not. It's not like we're we're upset that we're the favorite. I mean, it's, like I said, it's be, it's good to be recognized, but but uh, we knew that we had a chance to have some preseason hype, I guess you could call it, because we had you know a pretty good team last year, and we had a, a great deal of returning starters from last year's team. I know you recruited California before you got back. Right. Uh, well, you know, let's, you know we've. The Southern California area has been a huge uh, recruiting ground for us ever since I've been at the University of Utah. And when we got in the Pac-12, it, it you know it was it just elevated the targeting. You know who we were targeting down here. You know we were able to stand toe to toe with uh, some of the bigger schools. Whereas in the past, uh, you know if, if some of the bigger schools were on some of the kids we were on, we knew there wasn't much of a chance. But now we feel we can win some of those battles down here in Southern Cal. Is it fair to say you have a buddy? Yeah, you know, we, we I'd like to think we have a rivalry with Washington because they're so good. I mean, that that's you know we think that's uh, a show of respect if that's how it's viewed. But because we got all the respect in the world for them and what they're doing up there, uh, we haven't been able to beat them very often since we got in the league. I think once or twice, once, twice. I can't remember. Yeah, but but Chris is doing a great job there. Uh, they got us twice last year. Anytime you beat the same team twice in one year in football, that's a a pretty uh, you know good accomplishment. And so. Uh, it seems to be a great matchup every time we play him. It seems to be a, a battle to the bitter end. How many times have you had <coughs> Byron's interception in, in, in disbelief? Or how would you describe, <laughs> or how would you describe it? I saw it live, and I probably watched it one other time, and then I try not to watch it anymore. So, yeah. Is, is it frustrating knowing because it's pretty close? Because you guys are really getting closer and closer and closer. We feel we are. Yeah, we feel we are. And uh, you got to find a way to get over that hump because getting close, you know, doesn't really make many people happy. you gotta, you got to have that breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the North, you know, for the past several years has won the, in fact, every year but one, they've won the uh, championship game. Is that right? So, you know, if you want to get more respect, you got to win, win more games. And so I think that, uh, you know, we've got good football in the South. We've got good coaches. We've got very good players. But uh, in order to... Uh, you know, be more in the conversation. I think we've got to have a, be a better showing in the championship game. Yeah, I think so. And I think it would be when we went to Oregon a couple of years back, two or three years ago, and just played lights out. And just, you know, it was like, because they're a heavyweight. Oregon is a heavyweight in the Pac-12. There's no doubt about it. They're a, a quality program. They're, they're winners. And uh, to go up there and to uh, be able to, to win convincingly, I think that was a, a breakthrough in our program. Hey, we can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody, home or away. And if we play the way we're supposed to play, we got a chance. Yeah, you know, in order to win championships, you got to win on the road. I mean, you got to win at home. That's a given, but you got to win on the road to, to win a championship. And, and we take the uh, us versus the world mentality on the road. You know, it's circle the wagons, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the approach we've taken. And, and uh, nothing better than to be on the road. And in the fourth quarter, the, the stadium's emptying out, and, you know, you've, you've got a victory. And, and, you know, 75, you know, players have shut up. You know, sixty thousand fans. That's that's uh, not not a lot more gratifying than that. Yeah, 
we got a couple question marks. Offensive line, we've got some holes to fill. We got, uh, you know, we came out of spring with three guys that we know are going to play for us, but we've got to find seven or eight guys that are going to be in that rotation uh, up front on the offensive line that we have confidence in. So those questions have to be answered during uh, fall camp, as well as the place kicker. We don't know right now who our place kicker is going to be. It's been a lot of years since that's been a question mark. Yeah, so. So uh, hopefully we come away with uh, with a kid that can get the job done. We're confident that'll happen. Yeah. You know, Urban is uh, one of the obviously one of the best coaches uh, in the country, and it, you know, just got so much respect for him. Learned so much from him when I worked under him for those two years. Uh, he's not all that old, you know, he's only 50 something. And so uh, I don't want to speculate, but, but I know if he decides to return uh, that, uh, you know, he's got a lot of years left in, in the tank if, if that's what he wants to do. But he's going to come in August. He's going to come see us in August. Yep. Already got that schedule. Yep. Kyle, how's, how's the player leadership you feel like with this group? Outstanding. I think we've got a, a great group of seniors and some underclassmen as well that have really uh, stepped into leadership roles. And, uh, you know, I've never been around a great team that didn't have great leadership. Uh, this team seems to have that so far. You know, time will tell. We've still got a lot of work to do. But, uh, you know, teams where the coaches lead, uh, you know, usually pretty average. Teams where the players lead, they got a chance to be great. That's what Zach said. He felt like. Guys aren't letting each other slack off. They're holding each other accountable to yeah. this point, which is great to see, and uh, that needs to continue. You know, we got a lot, of, like I said, a lot of work to do between now and the opener. But if we can keep that same mentality and that same mindset, then uh, that's going to help our cause. I know you said the schedule is what it is, but having to open conference with USC being picked second in the division. Yeah, at a place we haven't won for like a hundred years or right. something. Yeah. How does that affect <laughs> your thinking about that game? Uh, you know, that's. That's down the, in coaching terms, that's light years away. I mean, that's so far away you can't even, you don't even think about it. But, but uh, you know, in the Pac-12, every week's a challenge. You better bring your A game every week because this league is so competitive and so balanced that if you, uh, if you don't play your best, you don't have much of a chance to win. In a way, is it good to play them first? And you know you have the rest of the season? Uh, you know, that's a, a tough question. I don't have a great answer for that. I know that uh, they're always loaded with talent, and even though they're picked, you know, number two in the South right now, their talent level is as good as, in my estimation, as good as it's ever been. So it's going to be a tough matchup for us. How much has your staff changed from the analysts, you know, outside or the recruiting department compared to five or six years ago? How much has ours changed? Oh, tremendously. I mean, it, we're, we're growing every year exponentially. We're growing in the, in the recruiting department where it was, you know, when I first got to Utah 25 years ago, it was one guy who did recruiting and operations and you know he wore about five different hats to now where we have a, a separate recruiting department on its own that's staffed by about eight to ten people and three or four guys in operations I mean everything has grown in fact we moved into our building brand new building five years ago about how are we ever gonna fill this place up now we're out of offices and scrambling to try to find places to put people so it's uh, it's definitely grown and I think everyone pretty much is experiencing the same thing yeah, there is a saturation point. Yeah, there is, and and I think we're reaching to the point where that might start to creep in. But but uh, you know, the one place that you can always use the the help is recruiting. I mean, that's you know, the more eyes you have out there and, and people studying film and and scouring the country for talent, that uh, that's the place where you can really uh, utilize extra help, coaching wise and administrative wise. I mean. You can get uh, too many people there, and it just seems like everybody's underfoot, and you got too many bodies. But I don't think we're to that point. I don't want to paint that picture, but you can get to that point. Along those lines, do you have someone that's going through the transfer portal? We do, absolutely. He watches it every day, every day, and he reports to me. And and uh, and the transfer portal is not really well organized. You know, it's just kind of haphazardly put in there. It's not broken down by position or anything. There's no. Uh, real systematic approach to it. They just throw names in there. And so it's a tedious job. But to answer your question, yeah, we have a guy that is the portal expert, I guess you could say, that has his eye on it uh, every day. Do you see that changing with your roster management? Like maybe you do maybe one out? Absolutely. Absolutely changes the, the thinking there. And, and in years past, we've 
try to fill up uh, every year or every signing date, you know, by the Latin second signing date, which now there's two signing dates. But now we try to hold, you know, two or three or four scholarships back for the transfer portal guys because, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's changed the game. I mean, it's just been a, a, a situation where recruiting, you're recruiting now all the way up until fall camp, essentially, or until your initials run out, you know, whichever happens first. But, but we definitely hold back scholarships in hopes that we'll have some transfer portal guys or grad transfers, uh, you know, come into the end of the program. Yeah, yeah, that's true as well. I mean, the portal has is, is, is changed the game, uh, not dramatically, because I, I, I still, you know, there still was movement before that, but, but certainly that movement has is, is, uh, been uh, enhanced. But I think that it may slow down again, because I think there's, there's, I know there's a lot of guys in the portal that got no place to go right now. You know, the portal is still stocked with guys that, that don't have any place to go and they can't go back to the original institution because most coaches take the same stance that we do. If you go to the portal, you're done here. There's no coming back. You know, it's not shop yourself around. If I get a better deal, take it. If not, I'll come back. And so I think in the future, players will see what happened to some of the guys, maybe be a little more judicious about making that decision to, to enter the portal. My own feeling. I don't have anything to support that other than gut feeling. How valuable is a player like Jalen Johnson out there at cornerback? Huge value. I mean, the. The biggest value for a defensive coordinator, there's two things, a, a dominant edge pass rusher and a shutdown corner. Those are the two uh, most sought after commodities that a defensive coordinator looks for. And shutdown corner, that term gets thrown around pretty loosely. There's not very many of them. There's not very many of them out there. He is one of them. And so that allows you to do so many things in coverage, roll the coverage away from him, man him up, just do so many options when you have a guy like that. We have about three minutes so, remaining with Utah. Three minute warning. So yeah, it's a huge advantage. Yes. And then Julian Blackman moving to free safety. How's his transition been? How confident are you in that he's going to make that, that switch? Hundred percent confident. I think you know, based on what we saw in spring ball, it's not speculation because we have tape of him playing safety all spring long. Uh, he's got great ball skills, which at free safety in our scheme, you know, we have that center fielder back there. We've had some really good ones, Robert Johnson, Marcus Williams. He's right in the mold of those guys as far as his range and his ball skills. Uh, he's a physical kid. He's up over 200 pounds now. He played at corner at about 185, so he added 15, 20 pounds to his frame. But uh, he has ball skills. I'm convinced if we played him at receiver, he could function there as a legitimate receiver. That's how good his ball skills are. Coach, what's, what's been your your message with just with this team kind of the thing you keep telling them throughout this offseason to kind of keep their heads right just to stay focused and don't you know block out the noise don't listen to everything that's out there because like I said we're getting a lot of preseason hype I guess you could say and and uh it doesn't mean a thing it does not mean a thing it's not going to help you win any games and so just stay focused ignore what's out there and just you know continue to respect the process that uh, that we have in place what was your own reaction this morning when you see that or hear about it you know, just it is what it is. I mean, what what can you say? And as much as I hate that statement, it is what it is. You've heard me say that before. But, but uh, I don't think think it's a negative thing. We're not we're not running from it or trying to hide from it. It's just you got to handle it the right way and understand that. You know, at you know, at the bottom line, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a lot of people that think a certain way. That's all it means. But it is a nice acknowledgement for our players in the program that, hey, people think you guys are pretty good players. So that's a good thing. In yeah, that it's respect. a sign of respect. That exactly. To some degree it's it's yeah. an accolade for the players in the program, which, which is the best thing about it. But again, you can't, you can't get hung up on it. If somebody gave you the choice to play a, the Pac-12 title game at, uh, at a neutral site or at your home stadium, which would you choose? Okay, I couldn't hear you. So which would you choose, your home stadium or a neutral site to play the Pac-12 title game? Pac-12 title game? Yeah. Our home stadium. I'd rather play anybody in our home stadium. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. Yeah, no question. The conference is discussed. I guess 10 a.m. 100%. As, as coaches and players, you want to get up and play right away, you know, sitting around all day. And, and as great as our atmosphere is at Rice Eccles at night games and as, as electric as that place is, it's tough to sit around all day waiting to play. You know, players are chomping at the bit. And if we can get some early games, I'm not saying play at 10 a.m. every week, but we wouldn't mind playing a, a 10 a.m. game or two every season. It's not a, a, we'd see that as a positive. So after spring practice, do you consciously say we need two offensive linemen? Absolutely. And yep. And yep. Yep. We, we, yep. Those are, those are predetermined and, and uh, you know, decided, not predetermined, but determined after spring ball where our deficiencies based on what Andy wants to do, based on our personnel. What do we lack? And like I said, we had three or four scholarships we held back to fill those needs.
kind of an impact can Mike Juarez make? What are you expecting? Well, Mike Juarez is not with us. Oh, he's not always no, he's not with us. No. Okay, guys, thank you. And great. Coach, no questions? I just listened. Okay. <laughs>